Good morning and welcome to our webinar, Machining of Stator Housing for Electrical Vehicles. Especially at times like these, um, the electrification of uh, vehicles is uh, more important than ever. Whether in combination with a battery cell or with a fuel cell, but also in combination with a combustion engine. Um, my colleague Alexander Ott, um, Key Account Manager for Volkswagen Worldwide, um, myself, Fabian Donner, um, Head of the Product Management um, at the Business Unit Turning at EMAC. Um, we are both former and uh, long-time employees of, the, of Scherer Feinbau, and we know the products uh, that we present you today um, very, very good. So um, we will give you an insight into the machining um, of Stator housings. Um, on single machines and on double spindle machines. Um, during our webinar, um, you have always the time to um, write questions um, in the chat. Um, we answer it um, directly or um, we answer it later. Um, you receive um, after the webinar our contacts um, via email. And yeah, if you have a special request, or further questions, um, then just let us know. Let's take a look at the agenda. First, uh, my colleague Alex uh, will start with the background um, of electromobility. Then I will present the requirements for the machines and machining, followed by an overview of the VDZ series and which automation concepts um, are available. Finally, Alex uh, presents machining in two and three operations and show a video of the machining and give a final conclusion to our presentation today. I hand over to the, the floor to my colleague Alex and uh, wish you an exciting and entertaining presentation in the next 30 to 45 minutes. Here, thanks Fabian. Also from my side, a very warm welcome. And uh, yeah, your participation of our e-mobility e webinar is well appreciated. I just start direct with a short information. Everybody of you is used to that the electric electricity of the car market is done and uh, will be just increased during the next years. So therefore, a short introduction. Till 2030, the worldwide amount of electrical cars or or hybrid cars will be go up to 116 million. This is definitely a short market. So also we have in Europe, we will have 75% of all cars during 2030, which will be electrical cars or hybrid cars. What we can see here the last year, or, or a little bit less than 7 million uh, electrical vehicles and this is the point for us as an EMAC group to focus very clear on this market and to show you today our possibilities and our solutions depending on electrical cars. Some yeah, parts which will not last in an in e-car e so and therefore we have to use for new components like they are very rotationally symmetric in the e-motor. If we go a little bit more in detail, we have prepared here a showcase where we can show you an inside view of an electrical motor. So when we start from the outside to the inside, we have our stator housing, we have our cooling jacket, we have the rotation shaft, which we are can all provide you with the turning solutions on the EMAC group machines. As well, we have normally the PWR pulse vexel on these on these motors, which we also can offer you good solutions from our sister company in Heubach, the EMAC laser tag. And further, we have here on this example, what we can see, we have a small gearbox as well, where we have the gears there, we have the known and proven solutions from the EMAC group as well. We have here our differential case and also the, the ring gear connection to the differential case, which are used parts for us and for you as well. Here we see a screwed 
solution where we have a screw, uh, the, the diff case and the ring gear fixed by screws. We also have a lot of requests, actual and realized project where this is not used by screws, where we do it in a welded combination. And therefore, as well, our company, our sister company in Heubach, Emag Laser Tech, can offer you. But today, we are focusing a little bit more on the state of housings and on the cooling jacket. <clears throat> and therefore, I like to start direct a little bit deeper in the presentation for the requirements of the machines. And therefore, I like to hand over to Fabian once more, and he will explain a little bit more which is a really need for the machine and what has the machine to do. Thank you, Alex. Um, all right, uh, let's start with the requirements uh, for the machine and for the machining. Um, on the top of our list uh, is the stiffness of the machine. Uh, we need a high stiffness for those um, thin wall, um, thin wall parts, um, stator housing, and also cooling jackets. Um, for that, we use um, big guides uh, of the size of 55 and. Uh, uh, ball screws of uh, the size 50 and uh, we have a welded um, a steel welded um, machine base filled with um, special concrete for a good um, vibration behavior and the second important uh, is of course the thermal behavior of the machine um, so what can we do for uh, for good thermal behavior we use some cool um, cooled uh, main spindles and also um, a cool turret and the use of coolant during the machining process uh, also helps us to have a good thermal behavior in the machine. <clears throat> on, the, um, on the right side, uh, the upper picture shows uh, the Operation 10 um, of a coolant jacket uh, machining. And uh, we, as we can see, um, it is very, very long. Um, so our machines are um, designed to, um, to machine up to 300 millimeter of height or length of the stator housing. And for that, we have a um, long set axis um, stroke of uh, 450 millimeters. And on the picture um, below, we can see um, the operation 20, uh, in the Operation 20, we also use um, driven, a driven turret and driven tools. And in both pictures, we can clearly see we have a hanging spindle or coolant. Um, we have an optimum chip flow. That means um, just, just uh, in, the, in the machine base, we have the um, chip conveyor, and this is uh, perfect for us. So um, on the right corner, um, we see some special tools. Um, those special tools uh, are for finishing and uh, for roughing. Um, so we, we machine the complete um, inner um, diam diameter and uh, we can, um, we can um, machine up to 300 millimeter, 350 millimeters um, of diameter. Um, for that, we need high torque and high power. Our main spindle has um, 820 newton meter torque and uh, 65 uh, kilowatts um, power. And on the um, picture below, we can see the wide or the, the huge um, machining area of this machine type. Um, we have the opportunity to add additional um, uh, tools or also a milling spindle. And with the help of the Y-axis, which is um, optional, um, we can use um, the, the additional tools um, when we shift it in Y and we have more, more um, a better utilization of the machining area. All right, let's uh, have a deeper look um, on our um, VD set machines. Um, so these are the technical data uh, for the machine series 420 and 50 uh, and the 520 XL. Uh, we have we have the same um, design base um, for both machines, so it means um, they have the same footprint, um, but the inner um, 
the inner um, technology um, is a little bit different. So we have the option between an A8 and A11 spindle interface. Um, we have the same power and the same torque, but different um, speed. This is uh, uh, just um, due to um, bigger bearings um, for, for the A11 spindle. The whole machine has a um, clamping chuck diameter up to 600 millimeters. Um, in special cases, uh, we can also have um, uh, chucks up to 630 millimeters, but this is um, something we have to double check um, uh, in a special case. The turret um, can be um, VDI-40 or VDI-50, but also um, the interfaces for CDI, um, for HSK or for CAPTO are possible. So before we um, go on, um, we have an um, incoming question. What material are the stator housings made of? What are the requirements or the problems with the materials? Is the machining done dry? Yeah, I guess I will pick up this question and uh, go shortly over here. We have prepared some air example parts, which we have realized on other projects in the past. As you can see here, we have here, for example, the cooling jacket. What we have done, this is a 100% aluminum part. Then we have here a stator housing, which is, uh, they're mostly aluminum, but you can see on the inside we have a Bosch. And this Bosch is a Sinta Bosch, which is uh, implemented during the founding process. And so here we have a machining in our machine, which means uh, aluminum and Sinta Bosch. And the third part, what we have here is a, a forged steel part what is also done on our machines. So this is uh, mostly all the variations of materials what we are using on our machines with the stator housing. And here, I guess it's clear for everybody now that we here in this case, we needed uh, wet conditions in the machine. So that me means we make it with coolant fluid. The, my, the most important thing and uh, here, the high stuff what we need is uh, these parts are very thin walls and so therefore but uh, later a little bit more in detail we need special clamping designs in the most cases yeah and to reach the the, the high tolerances on the for sure on, that's on right stages. all right let's uh, go back or jump into um the presentation um on the right side um this is um this was a test um, machining um for um, an American electrical car manufacturer. Um, what we can see here uh, is a special uh, multi right side. Um, we can barely see it, but there is another um, long um, turning tool for the upper bearing um, of the stator. Um, the high pressure, um, we can use some high pressure up to 70 bar in this machine. Um, it it gives us a, a good chip flow and a good um, chip line. And uh, with the y-axis, uh, we can use this um, big machining area perfectly um, when the, when the um, tools, the additional tools are uh, swifted in, um, in the y-axis. Um, we can use more than just uh, one or two tools in this area. And we also can add a milling spindle with the HSK um, 63 interface. And of course, we have the possibility to uh, implement an uh, in-process uh, measurement uh, via uh, a measuring probe, um, mostly tactile. So let's have a look on, on uh, this uh, machine here. Uh, this is a single machine, single spindle machine. Um, it is the easiest way um, to out, for, for automation uh, of, uh, of our machines. Um, we just use a drag frame conveyor for manual loading. But you can also add um, a robot cell or something like this. Um, this, is, um, yeah, this is not the problem. Um, we have a footprint of um, some, an autonomous solution. We can also um, use the pick and place system. I will explain this um, uh, later. Um, with the pick and place system, we have the opportunity to interlink 
with other machines or with the big conveyor system in, in the plant. So let's have a look on, on this um, sample layout. Um, here we can see the, the drag frame and the chip conveyor and the coolant system and this big machining area here. This is, um, like I said, a standard um, layout. Um, we delivered this machine um, quite a few times. So um, now it's getting interesting. Um, this is um, the double spindle machine. Um, the main focus is here um, on the pick and place system. The, the pick and place system um, is, is for unloading and loading um, the, the, the conveyor. The conveyor goes um, behind the machine base and between um, the electrical cabinet and we grab the the part from the conveyor system with this loading axis, we have the opportunity to flip it. Um, also between um, the operation 10 and the operation 20, um, we, we load it uh, to the round shuttle. Um, there are um, placed some uh, workpiece, workpiece pallets um, and we have a fast loading and unloading time of uh, eight seconds or less. And this um, double spindle machine um, has the big advantage that we only use one NC control or CNC control uh, to control the complete machine. And due to um, the, the left and the right machine halves, um, we have the opportunity to um, operate in a OP10, OP10 mode or OP10. And, um, a very nice um, fact, I think so, um, is that both machines are not really connected. Um, so both machine halves are just um, standing together. And uh, if we machine on the one side, um, we don't have to influence on the other side by vibrations and e stuff like exactly, this. Exactly, Fabian. We have complete independent machine bases. They are not connected, not screwed, not welded together. So that means when you have a rough cutting on OP10 and a finish cutting on 20, for example, you don't get any influence from one side to the other. What is very important for machining state or housings and cooling jackets. Right. And um, of course, um, we talk about productivity. Um, cost per part. Um, this this machine, this double spindle machine, um, has a very very small footprint. Um, if we compare it to the um, single um, spindle machine, 15 square meters compared to 20 square meters by double, almost double um, productivity. All right. Um, yeah, here another sample layout um, for this double spindle machine. We have this pallet conveyor here. We have uh, our pick and place system, the loading axis here, the round table or the, the round shuttle. Um, on the left side, the operation 10, on the right side, the operation 20. And we also have the opportunity to add here in this area um, special um, devices for deburring or wash machines or measurement measure machines. Exactly. We can we can add on on the back back side of the machine. If we extend a little bit our pick and place unit, this can be extended by one meter, two meters. That doesn't matter. And then we can load direct in the machining system, integrate it without an extra robot or an extra gantry. We can have it and load. Like you said, measuring machines, we can do burying stations, we can have some washing boxes or just some other applications, bushing presses, whatever is needed, this is possible to integrate it in the system and to use just one control. We don't to use one control and on a small footprint and it's a, it's a complete system. Exactly. Oh, uh, we have an incoming uh, question. Uh, what is the accuracy on the rotary table? Um, well, uh, let's say the accuracy is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, we have a backlash-free gearbox um, in combination with the NC-controlled um, motor, so we can um, we have a, a very good um, accuracy. Um, but the accuracy comes also from the from the workpiece um, pallets from the carrier. Um, 
If we need uh, better accuracy, we have the opportunity to use um, pneumatic um, grippers on this, um, on this round shuttle uh, just to have yeah, better accuracy between OP10 and OP20. It depends um, on, the, on the chuck um, or in the... De definitely. It depends a little bit on the chuck and, and on the requirements of the quality of the part. And then our technology department is making the investigation, okay, what is needed and what is the easiest and simplest solution <clears throat> to achieve the quality requirements. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, let's um, have a look here on this um, 3D model. Um, this is now complete with the cover. Um, on the next page, um, we see it uh, without the cover. Uh, but here, you can, but for better imagination, um, this is the tunnel, uh, which we can use to interlink uh, with other machines. Um, a, chip, um, uh, a chip conveyor, uh, the, the, the coolant system, and of course, um, our, our loading um, system. But on this next page, um, I think we can see it much better. Um, so this is the loading gantry, which we can extend for additional stations. Um, we see the column and the main spindle with the X, Y, and Z axis. Our turrets on the left and on the right side, there is a milling spindle. And of course, our round shuttle. Um, we have another incoming um, question. Um, are PCD tools um, usable with this machine? That's uh, easy. The yes. answer is yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, for sure, if you, if you machine the aluminum parts, uh, we use for sure P, uh, PKD or PCD in this case. Of course, of the tool life, that's uh, yeah, the most efficient way to, to machine these parts. But uh, as we see on the other uh, um, uh, example part, what we have with the, with the Bosch inside, uh, we are using as well sometimes a combination of hard metal or NPKD or some different tools. You're right. Okay, um, so I hand over to, um, to Alex again. Um, he will uh, give you a short insight in the machining of the Seder housing in two operations first and then in three operations. Yeah, thanks a lot, Fabian. So, yeah, I will get a little bit more deeper in the machining of the Stator housing, or in this case, in the cooling jacket in two operations. Like you see the part over here, that's the same part I showed before uh, in, in, in real. And, uh, yeah, this part... Has a, has a length of 280 millimeters, so it fits perfect in our machines. The outside diameter, 260. The tricky thing, and uh, to be honest, it, it looks in the first few like it's just a tube, but the devil on these cases is always in the detail. And so what we see here, this is a part, and it's a very thin part with a wall thickness of 12 millimeters and sometimes below this. And so everybody of you who is used to the machining of these parts or some same, simple, uh, same parts like this, um, yeah, you have to hold it, but it's not easy to hold it without to make a deformation by the clamping check. And therefore, we have an own design department for chucks, as well as we work with some clamping specialists for special clamping chucks, like in this case. In this case, we have a face and centering clamping chuck, what means we have a mandrel or mandrel concept mm -hmm. with two areas in the part on two levels, with each of them have six clamping units, and the main hold of the part will be done by a face clamping. This face clamping is a little bit special in this case. Of course, we don't push the part by, by pick them up in the pick up station. We clamp it more or less flying. So this is possible with this chuck. Of course, this chuck has retractable end stops and movable clamping fingers, what gives us a chance to open and close these clamping fingers during the process. Though that means we can machine the flange side, we hold it first on the flange side, and during the operation 10, we just hold it on the centering and machine the, the flat area as well by opening and closing the clamping fingers and the hydraulic end stops. This is, in this case, operation 10. So machining the complete outside and make a set, uh, set position for the next operation 20. 
If we jump here on the chuck, what is on the operation 20, now the part is leveled 180 degrees. We have to do there some the internal machining complete and as well on the flange, some milling, some drilling, backside deburring uh, operations. And therefore we use, uh, let me say, a concept of clan over uh, in, the, in the lower part, uh, lower position of the part and one in the, in the upper position of the part to handle this. Therefore, we have uh, prepared a short video, what I'd like to show you now. So here you can see this part comes from the foundry direct to our machine. It can be loaded by hand, or let me shortly interrupt the video. So it can be loaded by hand, or we can add in front of the machine some, you know, let me say, robot cells, bin packing cells, gantry possibilities, and this also can be provided by our business unit automation inside the EMAC group. So this part is loaded now on the pellet conveyor and goes in the machine. And in the machine, yes, yeah, we can see now, it starts with our gantry, what Fabian explained a little bit earlier. This is the pick and place unit, how we call it. And we grab the part and then the round shuttle goes and move it to the pickup station. Here you can see what I explained earlier, that we don't push this part down in the pickup. We just clamp it flying take the touch probe to get the zero offset and set, and then we have to have some milling operations, the rough cutting, turning operations, the thinning operations, everything on the outside and on the lower flange side. <laughs> Sorry. After that, we have the cleaning possibility in the machine. Then we go outside, we can have the touch probe here and make a frequency control of the part, every 20 parts, every 30, every 10, just some uh, yeah, geometry is what is needed. That's completely up to you, it's free programmable. Then the round shuttle goes back on the backside position, our pick and place unit grabs a part, what is now finished part of 10, swivel it and uh, place it on the raw part pallet for operation 20. The operation 20, here you can see the difference. We use the machine side from OP10 to push it in the pickup station and go now back in the working area of operation 20 where we make also the machining of the flange side on the other side and also the complete inner and some outer side machinings. Here you see the option of the milling and drilling units with the uh, driven tools on the turret. This can be also done by separate stations mounted on the machine bases, like HSK spindles and whatever is needed. And um, here we also have the possibility with the CX interpolation to make the backside chamfering, but this also can be done by the, by the interpolation with the real YX. If where we can make different offsets and measuring results from the part with the feedback to the tools, so an automatic correction. Also, just a short uh, explanation, this touch probe can also use after, after a tool change so that your operator don't have to yeah, bring the part by hand back in the, in the condition. No, it will be make a measuring cut and then the machine corrects it automatically and, and uh, the operator is free for, others, uh, for other jobs to do. This pellet conveyor can go on the same side, in and out, or we can use it going through the machine, so inside on the left. This is completely open. This was just now the, a very, let me say, simple explanation of this uh, cooling jacket, which is done in two operations. And now we jump a little bit more in com more complicated parts, which are closed on one side, for example, or have some, some flange operations like milling, like threading of different uh, diameters and different uh, threads. And there it could be I to think, use. Um, before we go on, yep. um, we, we have another question. Um, I hope we can answer it. Um, um, do, you have a, do you have a solution to prevent chattering on your machine that occurs when machining low strength components with skeleton tools? Um, yeah, uh, I, I vibration get, damping tools? Yeah, I, I, I guess no. I guess uh, when I got it right, I hopefully the skeleton tools, what you mean is uh, the special complete tools uh, where you make the outside or inside machining in, in one time. And uh, therefore, I have, I've come later a little bit more in detail, but we, we don't use these typical skeleton tools, which have the inserts all on 
120 degrees, for example, with three inserts. We are using a different system where we place three inserts, which are doing the same job as it on the skeleton tools, you know, what Fabian shows before in the small picture on the right upper side. Uh, we use just three tools on the same uh, inside a, an angle of 120 degrees. That means we have yeah, 240 degrees free space for the chip fall. And in combination with this, we also can have uh, yeah, can eliminate most of the chip clampings, you know, and shattering inside the part. I hope I, I could answer your question. I got it right. If not, please feel free and send me a personal email or give me a call after the webinar, and then we can discuss, discuss this a little bit more in detail. All right. But um, yeah, therefore, please let me go ahead with the, with the presentation, and maybe there's something uh, I answer your question once more. So if you look at this part, for example, it's, it's a stator housing, which has a little bit more machining, machining on OP10. So here we have three operations. The OP10, so the first station in this case is a machining center. Why we use a machining center? Of course, one is the amount of tools and it was an existing in the, in the shop of the customer. And so we implemented his available machines and just placed a double spindle machines from our side with some special applications with a milling spindle and these uh, special tools like a uh, skeleton tool. Yeah. And therefore, we have the chance to balance the cycle time perfect. We're talking here about a cycle time roughly two minutes. So that means every two minutes a finished part comes out of the whole line. Let's look at the OP10 just a little bit shortly. So the operation 10 on the inside and machine the complete outside and as well the flange side. As you can see, the milling operations and the different type of threading operations. This is one, yeah, it's depending on the 12 tool station turret, what we have in the turning machine. Center first or be, be after our machines is also possible. And if this operation is completely done, we are coming to our double spindle machine, which makes in this case operation 20 and 30. The machine is like Fabian explained, it's a 520XLDS, so a double spindle do machine. We have here also chuck diameter 600. We use here spindle interface A11 to have a bigger bearing diameter. We have a Y-axis with a total stroke of 280 millimeters in the machine and as well the maximum speed of 2800 RPMs. The OP20 working area as we see it here, we use our robot, uh, our robot software. This special tool, your skeleton tool, or our, yeah, we call it a, a special cutting tool, which makes the deep, uh, the, uh, the roughing and the finishing, one insert for roughing, two for finishing in this part. The adjustment is also a little bit depending on, um, yeah, on the material stock we have to remove and what is the com consumption of the single insert. This is always a little bit the adjustment we make. And here you can see we have all three inserts in an angle of two of 120 degrees. And this gives us in combination with the Y axis the chance to make once a conical and the most important is um, a diameter correction by the NC control. Of course, the normal standard tools, which have the three inserts around the part. So you have to adjust it, the, the pre setup in front of the machine, and then you have to, to use it in the machine and you have to do any adjustment on diameter or whatever by hand, and this takes a lot of time. And so here's our big advantage to make this correction with our NC control. And the last station is here. This is a, a, a big point. We have our HSK 63 milling spindle also implemented in this working area. And this eliminates, in this case, one complete operation on a machining center. Of course, we are able to make some milling direct in the turning in the same clamping situation. If this would be not possible, you need instead of three, four operations, for example, or you have a very unbalanced cycle time. And this is everything what we don't want. Of course, we all want to have more parts in the box at the end of the day. That makes money. And there, this the explanation, and there you can see the big advantage of our big working area. Sorry to interrupt you, um, That's fine. Alex. Um, but I think uh, just uh, if we have a look on this um, on this uh, um, slide here. Um, we got a new question. Um, hopefully, we can answer it um, okay. because it's the, the life cycle time. I don't have numbers, but 
Um, Emac uses um, a very different machining philosophy um, of inverted tool holding with chips evacuating via gravity. How much increase in tool life can we expect from this as opposed to the conventional machining with chips evacuating against gravity? <laughs> Here, this is... Uh, this is a nice question, and uh, it is to, a nice question. To be, yes. to be honest, in, in in my years in the machine, I always get this question: Hey, can you confirm any tool life? And uh, as everybody knows from you, if we go and uh, go to a tool supplier and ask for a confirmation of tool life, they say, okay, if you machine and dry, it's 15 minutes, and if you machine with with water, it's 20 minutes. This is something you get to say. The difference from the vertical, the chip fabrication is better. Yeah. But a real tool life estimation, what is more than on the horizontal, I cannot give you today. This is also something we have to see, okay, what is your machining? What is the machining area? How open or how close is the part? What are your material conditions here? Yeah? And, and all these parts together. Send us your request, give us your part, and then we can make the investigation with the exact machining type, with the exact material conditions you need and you like to have. And then we can give you in rough estimation what will come out. I hope this, this question is, is answered as good as possible, but uh, yeah, to be honest, we cannot guarantee just on a webinar question, okay, the tool life is always 50% better than the others. No. That would be uh, not the right way to do. <laughs> All right. So I go ahead a little bit. So now we have machined the first area, that's the, the operation 20 here. The clamping in this operation is also a tricky thing. Here, like I said, we, we, we need to hold the part, but we are not able to, of course, of the de deforming. So we have here as well uh, a centering and face clamping check. The face clamping is be done on the on the upper flange. The outside we have six or twelve supports. That depends of the of the part length. If we use one or two levels, and a very special thing, what you can see on the left uh, corner is we have a centering mandrel as well in this uh, in this clamping chuck, which is retractable. So we need it first for the centering and the alignment of the middle axis of the part. This centering mandrel machine this area and go back with the mandrel in the part. And also in the middle picture, you see one uh, one tricky thing. This is really a, a, a devil in the detail. Of course, we have to align the part and acti activate pusher to locate the CX position of the part in this case. What you also can see here, this is the advantage I showed you in the 3D as well. We have a HSK 63 fully milling spindle. That means 38 kilowatt, uh, 31 kilowatts, sorry, and 9,000 RPM here. And there, there we can machine these red areas, what you see here. And normally just for these two areas, you have to implement a dip, another operation on a machining center. But with our machining possibilities, in the working areas and with the milling spindle, we can eliminate, we could eliminate one operation. And then this part is finished and done in the operation 20. And now in this case, we have done the internal machine before, and now we go over the mandrel in the part. The mandrel is also designed that we have two clamping levels, which can be act a little bit independent from each other, that we don't get a little uh, stress in the part. And then we machine the outer side and the low flange side. And this is more or less all the finishing of these parts. So I hope, I hope that we are now more able to show you a little bit. And uh, then I just come a little bit to the conclusion the, for this. So what we have, we have a very, very flexible machine, which can be automated with every kind of automation you have in mind. So we can use robots, we can use gantries, we can load it yeah, by hand on the drag frame conveyor. We have in the big working area the chances to implement different technologies like there are what you see, milling spindles, drilling spindles, extra tools, uh, yeah, very long tools for finishing. But instead of this as well, uh, Fabian, I guess we also can implant um, yeah, multi-spindle heads, broaching units, uh, some, yeah, Post-process um, Post measurement. measurement on the backside. Here, so this is a very flexible solution. And um, we are focusing all on your philosophy of machining or your strategy. And 
every request you have, you will appreciate if you come to us and we can show you the eMac solution for this case. Yeah, what is now the machine as well? We have a very high accuracy, what we have to reach. We reach this by the stiffness of the part. We reach this by the coolant of the main spindle as well on the turret. We also can have um, yeah, a better coolant air refrigeration if we use a different hysteresis from one degree to 0 0.1 degree if it's needed in special cases. And with these skeleton or, or special mm -hmm. tools, we can achieve in saving, depending on a normal yeah, boring bar, um, air, a savement of 30% roughly in this operation. And so yeah, with the chip fall of a pickup spindle, that's the optimum. Of course, the gravity helps you to bring out all the spindles. All right. Um, yeah, let's jump into another question. Um, so what are the possibilities to keep the stator housing as free as possible from chips or coolant or cooling lubricant? Um, yeah, um, we have the possibility to go uh, with water or with coolant um, uh, through the spindle and we can clean the chuck uh, from inside or or during the operation. Um, we also uh, can go from external um, uh, in, in the working area, better it is in the working area because of the water and the, and the chips, uh, to wash it from external. And uh, we saw this um, round shuttle. Um, we can wash the, um, the, the stator housing or the work pieces between um, operation 10 and operation 20 to have no chips um, during the clamping process. And um, if we want to keep it really, really uh, from, from dust, from chips and from, uh, from coolant, uh, we could also implement a, a complete washing machine um, interlinking with our machine. Here, that's, okay. that's completely right. Another question. Um, how many special tools or milling spindles can be installed in a working area in, the, in addition to the turret? Um, yeah, I mean, like we saw, so the, the space, what we have, and our machines are, are in the standard, are prepared to handle two milling spindles, which can be uh, organized in horizontal, then they are in the machining bed, or in vertical position. We also can implement an additional station for boring bar, a long tool, and also a multi-spindle head. We also can, uh, can implement two multi-spindle heads, in the x-axis direction or in the y-axis direction, depend a little bit on the pitch circle and then the size of it. But so we have the chance to implement mm. one for drilling, one for threading. As well, we can have broaching units, we can have some air, um, milling disc cutter units and all this stuff. This is also yeah, always a little bit to check in detail, of course, how big is my chuck and uh, how which diameter I have and if I have some collisions in the working area then. We have an area of uh, 900 millimeters between um, the center of, of the turret and um, the separation wall to the handling area. So in this area, we are able to um, implement, um, like Alex said, uh, different tools. And we always have to um, take care or uh, double check um, the collision. And, yeah. and let me take it up. And uh, in this case, our, our big y axis is a uh, is a very help is very helpful of course when you have a chuck diameter and you have to place all the the, the special technologies and aggregates on the same exact position then you always need the free space of the chuck but when you have a, y, uh, a big y axis you can implement it like i showed before you can have it positioned in the y and z axis direction so you can use the volume of the machining area better than just with a with a small y axis or just with an x axis right Absolutely right. All right, um, we have another question. The VDSET 520XL as a double spindle machine is definitely too big to deliver this machine in one piece. How is this done and what weights uh, are we talking about? Um, this is a good question. Um, the, VDC, the, the double spindle machine, like I said before, um, uh, is installed um, from, from two halves of a machine, a left machine and a right machine. And um, they are only connected uh, through the cover uh, in the front and uh, the back cover 
and um, our um, NC round shuttle. So we have to remove those parts and then we uh, can ship the, the, um, the single machines as itself. Um, we talk about weights uh, from 15 to 16 tons. Um, the whole weight um, depends on, on the options we put in, um, additional milling spindles or uh, whatever. The Y axis. Um, the the Y axis um, or a bigger, bigger main spindle or a bigger turret. Um, then we talk about um, total weight of this machine by 34, 35 tons maximum. There. And one, one thing why we why the machine is designed like this, the total handling is easier. I mean, you can send over machines by truck which are in one piece of 70, 80 tons without any, any question. But um, in this case, you don't need a special transportation, of course, the half of the machine is still fits on a normal 40 tons truck. And the handling by unloading and placing it in your placing, in your um, yeah in your For, production is also much easier than handling a, a, a very large and big solution okay um, we we have another question what about um, stator housings uh, with diameter bigger than 350 millimeters and a length over 300 millimeters what solutions do you offer here um, so yes we are limited and this has to be um, double checked individually, um, depending on your request, depending on the on the stator housing. Um, we are able to machine um, bigger um, diameters and longer um, stators, but we have to 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 yeah to have to have a look on this um, in a, in a special case. Um, for bigger parts, um, we are limited um, with our um, loading gantry, with our loading axis. Um, so in this case, um, we use um, not a round shuttle. Uh, then we use um, just the linear shuttles, and uh, the the loading um, is uh, taking um, or is can made, be done by a robot, can be, by can a be done by a robot flung. cell or yep. a robot, and also the rotating uh, from OP10 to OP20. Exactly. Okay, um, so there are no questions uh, anymore. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. And um, as I said in the beginning, um, you will receive after this um, webinar an email with our contacts. And uh, don't hesitate to contact us and send us uh, um, your requests. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. I just can pick up the words from Fabian. Uh, thanks a lot for your participation and uh, yeah, all your requests and all your questions are well appreciated. Just don't, uh, yeah, feel free to contact us more or less at any time. And uh, thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of the day.